Welcome to Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Egypt, a country that's been getting a lot of bad press recently. But is it possible that an entire country is bad? In order to unravel that mystery, let's go on a trip together and see it for what it really is. Before you pack your luggage, let's clarify a couple of things. Bear in mind, bringing professional cameras to Egypt is a gamble, and you can get arrested for taking your drone. So a GoPro or just a phone would do. Let's start at the center of Cairo. Welcome to the oldest and most famous market. Hana Khalili is located in the historic center of Cairo. This place looks like it came out of a fairy tale. There are so many places that sell handcrafted souvenirs, textiles, and food. And I don't want to discount the amount of cute cats that live in this area. The market has existed for the past 600 years, and it's in the same immaculate condition it existed during the Mamlukites' time. Walking around these alleys feel like time travel. Heck, you can even find old Superman and Pepsi posters. The place is a collector's paradise, and it is packed with tourists and locals alike. As per safety, Hana Halili is reasonably safe. The army and the police are both protecting this area. So walking around this historic wonderland feels like a treasure hunt. And the hunt would not start without us going inside a shop. Before buying anything from this shop, I wanted to come clean to you guys and admit something to you. But I'll tell you as we go, as I don't want to keep any secrets from you. The first souvenir that I spotted is for a very special woman. One that came from the very remote ends of Egypt and fought her way to become the voice of Egypt. We have Omar Khaltoum, the most famous musician of all time. <laughs> Umm Kalsoum is regarded as one of the greatest singers in the Arabic-speaking world's history. I hope you guys are okay in my terrible attempt in restoring this footage. She was born in 1898 and died in 1975, and she started her career in the 1920s. In 2023, Rolling Stone ranked Umm Kalsoum as number 61 in its list of 200 greatest singers of all time. She's so iconic to the Arabic-speaking world, she's almost like Frida to Mexico and Frank Sinatra to the US. Heck, they even made her into a theme of a lot of cafes in Egypt. But I don't know if buying all of them is a good choice because I want to buy them for people as a gift. So let's have another look first. These are amazing. You have Musala right here. You have a traditional Egyptian man. And the shopkeeper convinced me that I haven't seen anything yet. Okay, yeah. He handed me a couple of mysterious characters whom I have seen, but I don't know quite yet. Doesn't matter. Six, seven? No, no, no. Let me see first. I want to see this one. And I want to, because I don't know, I don't, I don't know these guys. And this is one of those moments where you test if the shopkeeper is trying to gouge you. It was obviously his fault, but he seemed cool. Anobis is considered to be a god of funerary rites. He protects the graves and guides the dead to the underworld. It's almost the same, no? Bastet or Bastet is a fierce lioness warrior goddess. She's considered to be the goddess of the sun. She's the protector of lower Egypt and the guardian of the king. And she's also the protector of the god of the sun. Tutankhamun is the youngest king. He died when he was 19, and his tomb is the only royal barrier that is found intact. It's cool because he still got his drip and toys. And this is beautiful Nefertiti. She played a role in changing people's polytheistic religion into one that is monotheistic, in which Aten, the god of the sun, is the only one to be worshipped. I'll take these four. I'm going to go soon after. But give me a good price. Do you have yeah. And then I recognize someone very special. For real? And this is Adil Imam. Adil Imam was born in 1940. His comedy has been entertaining the masses for generations. He starred in 10 plays and 103 movies. Not even his cast could have a defense mechanism against his infectious comedy. And he could freestyle at any time without losing the audience. <laughs> Adel Imam always stood against traditions and addressed social issues in a comedic manner. 
He embraced diversity and, and he expressed his feelings towards dictatorships and warned against extremism in multiple movies. And you can't discount his brilliant romance comedies. Hmm. His originality, choice of words and facial expressions made him a legend in the whole Arabic-speaking world. So Adam is basically an actor, he's one of the funniest Egyptian actors you'll ever see. So he's definitely worth buying. So you have Adil Imam, you have Umm Kalsum al Asabdi, which is one of the best musicians of all time, and ancient Egyptians. These are basically the entire Egypt's history. Okay. How much? I bought Adil Imam and I bought four. So 2600. And then I added one more, who started his artistic career in the 1930s and was known for his slapstick comedy, Charlie Chaplin's style. And then these seashell boxes caught my eye. They're very artistic, but I only have one luggage to take to the airport. It's unfortunate. Let's go back to the souvenirs and the secret that I wanted to tell you. My initial plan was to give them away randomly to my subscribers, but my channel is very small. So I decided to give them away to friends and random strangers who showed me kindness on my journey. Just message me wherever I go, I'll send you stuff. And you'll be surprised where they ended. You'll see it on my next video. And before we enter Om Kalthum's cafe, I want to ask you to kindly subscribe as it's the only way to continue making these videos. And hopefully we can make another giveaway Om Kalthum's cafe is brilliant, but the cafe doesn't get live until night time, and so does Khana Khalidi. The cafe is filled with talented staff, from comedians to musicians. Even the customers came with musical instruments and sang, but unfortunately I don't have the footage. But I'll take this opportunity to order a song for my niece. Let them sing for you. I'll bring them. No. I'm gonna bring them, watch no. me. Are you sure? They're gonna sing for you, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt was overdue. <laughs> the ambience in this place is intoxicating, and you haven't lived until you tried that busy day in that cafe. But let's talk money. The drinks cost us about 400, and the songs, 300. But as intoxicating as it is, have you ever been to the Nile? Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous Nile, a critical lifeline that brought life to the desert. But we're not gonna visit it now, we're gonna visit it at nighttime, because that's when it's hustling and bustling, just like everything else in Egypt. This is what's called a falouka, a sailing boat that's been restored to carry passengers. And the prices for passengers would vary. Today, we're gonna take this boat for 50 pounds per person. And tipping the musician is always optional. But that doesn't mean that it's not expected. Every falouka looks different from the other, and they all have different entertainment, and some don't. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Hey, kitty, can you scooch up so I can talk to these guys? Guys, we're on YouTube. The viewers are expected to see some action. Yo, you, yes, you. Let's go on a trip. Let's go to the Red Sea, please. And in no time, we were ready. The place is 130 kilometers away from Cairo. But to get access to any beach in there, you have to rent out a place. That's why we rented this spot at Al Ain al Sukhna, which literally means the hot springs. And somebody must have been really ready for this trip. So we rented this chalet around the Red Sea. It's called Al Ain al Sukhna. Let me see. Not the fanciest place out there. But this is the local area. You get a room like this. Three beds. Another room right here. A washroom right there. Kitchen. Another washroom. And uh, you have the shower head out there. No bathtub out here. However, 
The place doesn't look bad. 1,500 a day. So that's around 60 bucks. Yeah, that's around one. 75. American is like 60 bucks, 50 something bucks. Less than 50. Less than 50 bucks, right? 40. Yeah. We couldn't leave the security at home. We brought our this. Yeah, I'm still discovering the place. What's happening here? So dusty, everybody. But we were wondering what's around the area, and we were done discovering the chalet. The hot eye. The hot eye. The hot eye in Arabic, in the This is the beginning of our adventure. And this is the Tulip Hotel, which is an extension to the Tulip Beach Town. It was Tarek's suggestion to stay in the Airbnb instead. How much do you think the difference would be? Is it worth that dusty cabinet? To pull together, we can lift now 100 bucks each one. Wow, that's that's a lot of money. And this is this is less than a hundred bucks. Breakfast, breakfast, and uh, lunch. And this is our beach's corner store. It was definitely small, but it did the job. No? Yes. The only problem with this shop is that it doesn't have liquor. And this is our view from the rooftop. Let's go to the beach. And we're finally at the beach. I would literally get the water and don't your name. Hey, relax, buddy. We're on YouTube. And this is what a local beach looked like in Egypt. The water was surprisingly hot, and the weather was really good for swimming. And the salt is great for floating. It looked clean, but you get the occasional plastic bag that looks like a jellyfish. To the extremities. After a little bit of swimming, or you can say five hours later, we started getting hungry. The food on the beach was mediocre at best, but when it comes to seafood, it was always amazing. We were five people and our food from sunrise to sunset will cost us anything from 1,500 pounds to 3,000, which is anything from $50 to 100. Have you heard of the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Well, Tarek decided to ask this one guy what he was digging for on the beach. And this gentleman asked him to grab it and try to get it out. And that's why we ended up here. At this point, none of us knew what he was pulling, or if he was feeling anything at all. But he was holding to it like dear life. And Tarek was asking me if I knew what we got ourselves into. And suddenly, he seems to have found another one, and he's asking one of us to go grab it. And now, we're all contributing to the cause. Me and Tarek were holding things we don't know, and my sister was speculating on what we're catching. And my niece is holding the camera and filming the whole thing, as it unfolds before your eyes. And after 20 to 30 minutes of holding on to unknown creatures, he finally asked for my hand, and not in the way you're thinking. Ew, it's fitting. And this was the moment we've been waiting for a hunt for the unknown to catch this beautiful. Okay, I, I know what you're thinking. I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. I hope you get your mind out of the gutter there for a second. But hear me out here. This is a cucumber. A sea cucumber. This creature has been overfished in many parts of the world. And because of its scarcity, a kilogram of this could cost you $3,000. So he said every now and again he would go out to check on their population. As a sport, just like an angler. And then he hit us with this. He said that was illegal. He said what? Then I gave it back to him to put it back in the hole. You can say also he's well fed and I read him a bedtime story. And then he showed us another one, but this time I didn't want to touch it. But that opened up a whole different can of worms. One thing about these beaches is that they're private property. So you can't really go to the next beach without a permit. But it's a good time to stand, watch the sunset, and reflect on why you didn't subscribe yet. Seriously, you're missing out. This video really exhausted me, so uh, I think we're gonna end it here in half part five. And I'll tell you in my next video what my conclusion is on Egypt. You can watch my Egypt series here. Yes, to your left. I didn't drown you. You ruined my hair. Adios. <laughs>